Hi, it's week two of DevCamp. This week we're getting started on CSS. This is video 2.3, which gets us styling text with CSS. If you haven't already watched the week one videos or the other videos from this week, maybe start there. So let's start with our first property, text align. This changes the alignment of your text or where the text shows up on the page, whether it's to the left, to the right, or it's centered, or if it's justified, which means that it's spread out evenly across the entire page. So let's head over to Glitch to see what that looks like in practice. So under my style CSS file, I'm going to apply this to the background just so we can see what it looks like. Let's add a new declaration here, and I'm going to say text dash align colon, and let's start with center semicolon. And you'll see everything move towards the center. Try another one, maybe right. Everything moves to the right. The one you may not be familiar with is justify, which tries to make all the words span the width of the entire uh, window. So let's look at justify. So see how these it stretches the sentences so that they fit the entire width. That's what Justify will do. You'll see it a lot in newspapers and stuff like that. The next property is font size. So font size changes the size of your text. The value you give to font size has to be given a unit. So just like you would measure something in inches or centimeters, we have to measure the font size in M's or percentages or pixels. So pixels are really fine-grained and are exact units. The problem, though, is that 16 pixels on your laptop is probably different than 16 pixels on your high-definition TV or 16 pixels on your cell phone screen. So you can use it, but you need to be careful that it'll look different on different screens. M's and percentages are relative. They're based on the default font size for that device, which is usually about 16 points. So if I take that font size and multiply it by 150%, or 1.5 M, I get 16 times 1.5, which gives me about 24 points. This all makes sense when we play with it a little bit more, so let's get to that. So let's head back to Glitch and see this in action. I'm going to find the H1 and H2 rule that I made, and I'm going to add a font size declaration to it. Let's start crazy. Let's do something like 5M, so 5EM. And you can see, if you preview, that that's probably too big. So what this is saying is take the size that it was already at and expand it five times. So maybe let's say 2M, so that's twice the size. That looks more reasonable. We can also try it on another thing. So if I say P for paragraph, font size, colon, I can do less than one, right? 0.75M. And then we'll shrink it down smaller. So go ahead and try it on your site. So the last thing we're going to change is the actual font itself. The font is the style of the text on your page. So we do that using the font family property. The font family property takes two values. The first is the name of the specific font that we want. In our case, we're going to load this font from the web. The second property is the family that that font belongs to. This is in case the browser can't find the font that you want. It will look on your computer for a font that's sort of similar to try to match it. So let's explain what families are. To begin with, there's five sort of big families of fonts. There are serif fonts, sans serif, monospace, cursive, and fantasy. Serif fonts have those little tails hanging off of the T and the N and the R. Those are called serifs and they're there to make the font easier to read. Sans serif fonts don't have that, so fonts like Roboto or Helvetica, which we see in Glitch, don't have the little serifs, and so they're referred to as sans or without serifs. Monospace fonts have all the letters the exact same width. Cursive fonts are supposed to look like cursive for handwriting. In fantasy, it's just where all the weirdo fonts live. To use the fonts on our website, 
we need to be able to point our website to a place on the internet where the fonts live and then load them onto our page for the browser to use. For that, we're going to use the link tag in our HTML. Let's start by going to Google Fonts and finding a font that we like. All right, so let's see how we can apply a new font to our website. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go to fonts.google.com. Once you're there, you'll see this amazing list of all the different fonts you can pick from. If you want to see what a specific word would look like, up here I can type in, say, pangolins are rad. And I can see exactly what it would look like on my website in that specific font. So take a few minutes and find a font that really speaks to you that'll work for your website. I know the one I want to use is called Fredoka. Strange name, but I like it. I'm going to click on this font. So here, there's a tiny button over here that says select this style. Click on that button. This gives us the text we need to put into our link and the CSS rule we can apply. So I'm going to copy this link statement, control C to copy, and go back to glitch. Now in my index.html, I'm going to look inside my head. Here there's a bunch of stuff inside my head. Here's another link that links to my style sheet. I want to make sure that I put our new link to our font before the style sheet, because I can only use the font if I've already loaded it. So I'm going to make a new space. I'm going to control V to paste it. Great. Now if I go back to Google Fonts, I'm going to copy this font family statement right here. And in my styles.css, I'm going to find that h1 and h2 statement I used before and place in my font family. So there we go. It says font-family for doka1 and there's that big font family cursive. So let's see what it looks like. Go to show next to the code. That's looking pretty sweet. So apply some new fonts to your site and let's see what yours looks like. Great work. You've taken your first steps in learning CSS. Please rewatch any of the videos if you feel like you didn't quite catch something the first time. See you next week.